I'm convinced, man. Douglas Murray is one of the most intelligent and, and definitely one of the most eloquent voices of our time. And obviously, you know, it doesn't take a real genius to dismantle and destroy lazy leftist philosophies, but it's a whole lot more enjoyable to watch. You know, there is no combating actual logic and actual reason. And I think this video proves it yet again. I mean, Douglas absolutely destroys this poor leftist activist and I don't think she even realizes it. There are a set of what I describe as tripwire issues, which any journalist, citizen, absolutely anybody, if they just nick one of these tripwires with their foot, can find causes total career implosion. I say that they go, come down roughly to gay, everything to do with women, particularly relations between the sexes, everything to do with race, and absolutely everything to do with trans. Um, so I decided to do a chapter on each in my latest book to try to say what are the discussions we perhaps ought to be having and the ones that we're not having. Um, now, I'm very conscious, by the way, that a lot of this, I just throw this out for, uh, particularly for English speakers in the audience, or you're all English speakers, but all people from English speaking nations, that a lot of these phenomena at the moment seem to me to be particularly prevalent in Britain, America, Canada, Australia. Uh, a number of other countries, particularly across Europe, do have bits of it, but including France, but almost nowhere, actually nowhere as virulently as in the countries I've just listed. Um, and that's worth bearing in mind. I think it's a very interesting question as to why it's particularly virulent in these countries, these discussions go on. So, so what is it that's going on? Well, let me, as it were, do the opposite of, of, of straw manning and, and try to steel man this, because this is something I also happen to agree with. It seems that one of the things we're trying to do is a very noble aspiration, and it's something like this. Um, we're trying to come to a position where somebody with a competency, indeed anybody with a competency in a particular area, is never held back from achieving what they could achieve because of some characteristic. So no young girl growing up anywhere thinks they can't be something because they're a girl. Nobody who's LGBT thinks they can't get anywhere because of their sexuality. And nobody, whatever their skin color, is held back from anywhere because of their skin color. I'm going to treat myself to showing you an example of what I think is going on, which is very unwise in the media, just on this area. Now, let me give you, I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what I would describe as um, an overcorrection that's happening in the media on this issue, as I would argue in others as well. One weekend in 2018 on the BBC's website, the front page news website and the BBC, one of the top stories was that the diver Tom Daly had felt inferior about his sexuality, but that it had given him motivation to succeed. This was one of the top stories on the website. Uh, it was five years after Daly had come out, uh, and uh, just underneath that was news that a uh, tsunami in Indonesia had killed at least 800 people. One day later, and the BBC's front page of the news website had as one of its lead stories that day the news that a minor reality television star in Britain called Ollie Locke had announced that he and his fiancée, Gareth Locke, were going to join their surnames to become the Locke Locks after their forthcoming nuptials. Underneath that was the headline that the death toll in Indonesia had risen significantly overnight. Um, the New York Times, uh, in, on the 16th of October 2017, this is the international edition of the New York Times, the business section leads with a two-page story headlined, Gay in Japan and No Longer Invisible. And it relays the story of a Japanese businessman who had come out in his office in Tokyo and nobody had any problem with it. And what's more, as the story went on to say, Japan isn't a very homophobic society. 
So this was man comes out in not very homophobic country and nobody cares. <laughs> but that was the two pages of lead news story in the New York Times. If you turned to the culture section in the New York Times that day, there was a picture of two men dancing and it was the news that the New York City Ballet had decided to turn one of the female roles into a male role so that two men were dancing together and they had a massive news story about what an incredible breakthrough this was in the obviously previously very virulently heterosexual world of ballet. <laughs> So, but for some reason we have fallen, and we can get into why perhaps, into this very strange fragmented view of society which fragments along these very specific lines. And I'm going to finish because I'm conscious of the clock, but I just wanted to finish by saying this. What if all of this isn't making things better? What if it isn't erasing these differences? What if it isn't saying to people you can be whatever you want to be, but it's actually making these differences accentuated? It's playing off races against each other, it's playing off the sexes against each other, it's playing off sexual minorities against majorities. What if, what if we're not doing something that's making things better, but just doing something that's making it an awful lot worse? Thank you. You know, I think that's why Douglas is so successful, so good in debate. The guy, he's honest. You know, he's coming from a place of actual values, real thoughtfulness. He's, he's probably held the same views for his entire adult life. And I think, you know, that, that's really what makes the difference between a guy like Douglas and the average leftist. You know, the leftist views, they're always changing. You know, they're, they're always shifting. They're developing almost as fast as new genders can even be imagined. And I know I let that run a little long, but it's just so good. It's so honest. And, and what an idea. He says he's steel man the case, you know, the case of identity politics and their whole entire movement. He steel manned it before pretty expertly, literally just destroying it and asking a very simple question and a completely spot on question. You know, what if we're only making things worse? What if we are not making things better? And it's a great question. And, and my guess is that it can't be answered by this Silvana woman. Less than a week ago, in the city of The Hague, thousands of progressive but mainly moderate Dutch people came together to protest Black Pete. For those of you who don't know, Black Pete is the much debated racist blackface character, part of the Dutch tradition of Sinterklaas, our Dutch version of Santa Claus. These activists who were protesting Black Pete were surrounded by a large number of police um, to protect them against extremely violent hooligans neo-Nazis and self-proclaimed white supremacists, such as Ben van der Kooy. Two people are in custody at the moment relating to this incident. That's two out of the 60, and it means to me that 58 people were very much, very much free to express themselves even in the most aggressive and detrimental way possible without any ramifications. In fact, the irony is that the mere reason my friends party members and comrades were so brutally attacked in the first place is because of exercising their right of, to the freedom of speech by claiming that Black Pete is a racist caricature character. So I beg to differ that so-called political correctness or wokeness results in less free speech. I can safely say from my own personal experience that it seems to me that more can be said by some rather than uh, as well as less by others in the current political climate, at least in the Netherlands. Words have power and they can reinforce, re reinforce systems of inequality and suppression. Thus, you can still use these words. You can still be free to speak. Yet you need to be aware of what you're saying and um, <laughs> that if your words are racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic, well, somebody might just call you a racist, a sexist, a homophobe, or a transphobe. People will respond to it. So yes, you can say whatever you want to say. All you have to do is own your words and expect others to respond to what you're saying. So, as long as you own what you say, as far as I'm concerned, you can say anything. We can talk about anything. Thank you. 
I'm sure that you caught that, but I mean, just look how hollow and how thin the rules of engagement are for the leftists. I mean, she says, you can go ahead, you can say whatever you want, which of course we all know that it's not true, but imagine that it was true. She says, you just say whatever you want, but if it's racist or sexist or homophobic or transphobic or this, this or that ism, be ready for someone to attack you as one of those things, one of those ists and isms. But, you know, that makes sense. That makes sense. But the problem is, you know, they, they being the tolerant and accepting leftists of the world, they are both the attackers and the defenders against hate speech. And they're also the arbiters of what speech even is hate speech. And I promise you, if I ask them to explain to me exactly how there are 1,400 genders, just that question alone would probably be considered some kind of hate speech. And they probably would consider this video some kind of hate speech. But anyway, I mean, this, this is how these people do it. You know, they give an, a, a very extreme example of something that happened somewhere to take a position against free speech in a debate somewhere else. I mean, it's crazy. But I think when you really look at it, look at the X's and O's and ones and zeros, it shows liberal logic perfectly. She says that because some alleged neo-Nazi in Holland was able to protest some protesters, that that alone is some sort of proof that wokeness does not affect free speech. And she also said that her own anecdotal experience is that free speech is not affected because more people or more can be said by some and less can be said by others, you know, which is just lib speak for people on the left can say whatever they please and straight white males can just shut the hell up. And, and she thinks that that is what free speech actually looks like. I read your book. It, it came across to me that you feel a lot of the battles were almost won. Well, I, I do. I use this analogy that in, 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 in many of these areas, it's been my experience in my adult life that, it, that it, it's looked like watching a train reaching the desired destination, that is, at, at the station of equality. And as it draws in, suddenly getting ahead of steam, shooting off down the tracks, off the tracks, and scattering people in its wake. Um, what I mean by that is the, the weaponization of things at the stage at which they've never got better, where they're presented as if they've never been worse. And I just, I just urge people to, to take their foot off that pedal a little bit. That isn't to say don't keep moving, but, but don't lean on heuristics you've come to very recently this hard. Sylvana, what would you respond? Well, I always think it's... Um necessary to really understand that even though my emancipation uh, uh, has reached a certain level where I can say that I now have certain privileges, it doesn't mean to say that that goes for everybody who's part of, um, let's say, um, that particular uh, group that's identifying uh, within a certain scope. So let's make it more concrete and say that it's fine if you're a female exec like, like myself for instance I'm a female party leader um, so it's easy for me to say that ah, that's doable that's possible if I can do it anybody can do it but the fact of the matter is that a lot of young women who look like me do not have the same privileges and are still fighting so many battles that maybe I've overcome because of Lord knows why it could be just my um, my dominant character um, but it's not to say that they don't, that they have the same opportunities and the same privileges. So they still have a long way to go. And I know from experience that it's important for them to have role models and people that speak out on their behalf. I'm pretty sure that what she was actually trying to say is that her hard work and her dedication has given her opportunities, but she just can't find a way to say it. But it's actually... It's got to be really interesting and, and kind of a strange position for an identity politics, race baiting virtue signaler to find themselves in. You know, she she's black and she's female, allegedly You're not supposed to assume anymore. And she's supposedly quite successful. Yet her continued success demands that she tells other black females that they just can't do it because they're black and because they're female, any kind of female, either a real one or a replica. Right. Any kind of female. It's amazing. I mean, you have to imagine that in her own private thoughts that she recognizes that her own hard work is responsible for her success, but she just can't say it, man. It's, it's wild stuff, man. And, and no one on the left checks her. You know, she gets away with saying that, you know, there are people that look like her 
as if that's important, what they look like. But she says that people look like her and they just don't have the same opportunity as her. They're not equal to her. And, and, and that's it. You know, that's the meat of the statement. You know, they never want to talk about why or how and what makes these people different. Nothing. Just that person looks like me and we need to take from you to make sure that they are equal to me because they don't want to chip in themselves. They're definitely not going to take from themselves to give these people. But anyway, that's all these people have. Empty statements that say basically nothing. You know, that they sound good to people who are barely paying attention, but that is not going to work with someone like Douglas Murray. Well, let me pass it back to Douglas then. Do you feel you can always speak as freely as you I, want to? I, I, myself, yes. Um, I think that I'm in a, as it were, a very privileged position. I know this from uh, audiences and readers uh, who are in touch with me, that increasingly the things I describe which cause, have caused career destruction for very eminent people. I mean, thinking of things like the Nobel Prize winning scientist Tim Hunt who made this one joke at a conference in Korea and by the time he'd landed in London he lost every job he had. Um, I'm saying this happened to, has happened to very prominent people. They've either said something that's not that popular anymore or said something off color and so on and so forth. But my point is that all of that stuff trickles down to the workplace. And what I'm struck by now is the extent to which people who are, are not self-employed journalists and writers feel that they can't say the things that, other, that some people in public can say. So for instance, let me give one very quick example. I did this on the BBC the other week that this issue came up with this pop singer Sam Smith who described himself as non-binary and I got into a certain amount of trouble that didn't bother me but uh, because I said I don't think there's any such thing or at least no one's explained what it is sufficiently for me to agree to it. Now I know I know from feedback, including feedback in the studio from certain people at the BBC, that yeah. this is not an unpopular thing to say. I would think that if you went out to the general public and said, do you think there are people who are non-binary, and if so, can you say what they are, you'd get an, a fragment of 1% of people able to say that. And so, and so my point on that is not that I've closed the argument on that, but we haven't had the argument on a whole set of things, and it seems only to be a few people who do have a voice in public who can have it. Silvana, you want to? You're nodding your head, not yeah, in agreement. Because I'm always some um, surprised that certain people feel that they need to give their okay for other people to be or think something they don't necessarily understand. It doesn't matter whether I understand the beauty of um, uh, physical love between two men. There's no point, you don't need my permission no. to, to, to feel and act. So why does Sam Smith or anybody else who considers himself non-binary need needs um, uh, uh, permission from whoever? All, all that is up to us is to say, if this is important to you, and it does not affect me in any type of way, in any type of negative way, I'm going to respect that. So if you say that you're offended by blackface every year, then I don't need to understand how come you're offended. All I need to do is say, this is not my intention. How can I um, 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 fix it? And if you say you can fix it by stop acting that way, then that's what I'll do because there is no point. Uh, people don't need your permission to be whoever they want to be. Um, can, can I, I, I think it's slightly more complex than that, if I can say so. Of course. Let me give one, one reason why. Actually, the Sam Smith thing was significant. Again, sorry to go on about the BBC. The BBC's uh, uh, reporting of that immediately did what he asked, which was that they changed the pronouns. And some people think this isn't a big thing. Some of us do get a bit stuck on this. My point was simply that if you haven't actually had this out in public, you haven't actually discussed much of it, it's a bit strange that a major news organization would slip into saying exactly what a person had asked themselves to be described as simply because <laughs> sounds, they had asked for it. Sounds like respect to me. It's not nothing same, more, nothing less. It's not the same thing as respect because it's something which we haven't had out. He himself said, I don't know what 
it means to be non-binary. So, so my suggestion was he should go away and think about it. And in the meantime, we shouldn't all mutilate the language to fit Why? around him. Why? Why? If I come on this stage and I say to you, I would prefer for you to call me Mr. Simons. Why is it a problem to you to just give me that respect? But well, well, I'm, I'm afraid that because I care about the language, I didn't particularly want to say they was very good in their performance last night. Well, the, I'm not going to do it simply because of the, and now what she's talking about. It's compelled speech. She's talking about compelled speech. You know, when she puts it like, you know, why don't you just respect me and call me what I what I ask you to call me? That all sounds all well and good. Right. But the problem is they're not really asking. And when it does end up, you know, that someone doesn't call someone what they wish to be called or even when someone forgets or just makes some sort of mistake. That's the problem. And sometimes it's a real problem. You know, this is this is not about respect. This is not about being polite. This is about compelling speech in an effort to literally erode and change social norms. But when she frames it as, you know, no one needs permission to be who they are or when she even more ridiculously says it, you know, it's the same thing as not liking blackface, you know, that, that kind of stuff is misleading. I mean, that is just, it's a blatant false equivalence, you know, which really it only highlights that she realizes that her argument is completely garbage, that this argument cannot stand on its own. It's got to be obscured, like completely obscured and just slipped by anyone who's barely paying attention. And, and really the best part, the funniest part is that they pretend that it's everything to do with just not offending people. But what about those of us that are actually offended when we're compelled to not offend potentially delusional people? You know, they don't care about that. They don't care about offending those people. You know, those are the people that they themselves are actually offended by, you know, just by their existence alone. I mean, they are offended by those people just existing, basically. Anyway, I'm rambling. Fascinating stuff. But that's just my take, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments if you haven't already. Be a part of our growth. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. I'll see you in the next one.